In my final project, I'll be talking about the case study of WL, an individual with sign language aphasia. During the language unit of this course, we talked about a number of spoken language aphasia case studies, but I think this case study nicely highlights the fact that sign languages are just as linguistically complex as spoken languages. WL was a 76-year-old male who had a left hemisphere stroke. He was right-handed, born deaf, and a native signer of American Sign Language. The left hemisphere stroke caused damage both to Broca's area and the arcuate fasciculus, and you can see the full extent of the stroke's damage in this reconstructed brain atlas from a CT scan. As discussed in the lectures, both Broca's area and the arcuate fasciculus are very important for language function. The clinicians gave WL a number of cognitive tests to determine the exact nature of his deficits. He had no problems on visuospatial or apraxia tests, showed no attentional deficits across tasks, and had no signs of motor weakness. As you can see here, on a picture copying task, WL's performance shown in the middle column was perfectly fine, especially compared to a right hemisphere lesion patient who shows standard performance corresponding to hemispatial neglect. However, the story was completely different on language tasks where WL had severely impaired production, especially for nouns. For instance, if shown a picture of a bird and asked to provide the sign for it, WL would instead pantomime, for instance, flapping his arms. Similarly on comprehension, he showed extensive deficits for understanding signs, especially complex phrases. However, he could still understand pantomimes. So if shown a scene with a sign in it, he could not understand it, but if shown a pantomime, he could. This provides a neat dissociation between linguistic and non-linguistic gestural systems.